First of all, my name is Chad Novak, and I'm just here rep representing myself. Um, I'd like to say good evening to members of council, your worship. Uh, I would like to address some of my concerns that I have in regards to the report that has been submitted to you tonight for the Regina Revitalization Initiative. On page one of the report, there is mention that the level of provincial funding is unknown at this time, as the formal application just went in last week. My first question about this statement is, how can we be going ahead and submitting an application to uh, re increase our level of debt financing without knowing exactly what level of funding the city will definitely require for the project? Also, how can we go about making a land purchase from CP without even knowing that we can secure the provincial funding? Are we not putting kind of the cart before the horse with trying to secure the land and applying for a debt limit increase when there is still that one major unknown, that of provincial funding? It all, almost seems to sound to me like, and portions of the reporter seem to be in the same vein, that we are more focused here on getting the project started in 2013 rather than ensuring all the proper steps are taken in the right order. <clears throat> I would much rather the project start a little later with guaranteed funding for the entire project than to find out midway through that we need to scramble up or scramble to make up an unexpected shortfall. I have noted in the report that it states that provincial funding is essential for this project to move forward. Could you provide us with the dollar figure of financing that you requested from the province so that we, that we the taxpayers, can have a better idea of how crucial that funding actually is. Is there any concern at all that the province could refuse the funding application? And if so, what are the city's alternate plans in this possibility? Will we have a plan B, C, or D? If we do choose to continue on with plan A, as the current RRI is outlined, how does the city plan to finance the portion that the province would have contributed? Is there any possibility of going back to the taxpayer for a property tax increase? One that, according to the report, could be a substantial increase. Speaking directly towards the cost of the stadium, based on the documents that were released when the province had the control of the project, it was said that the stadium could be in the $400 million range. I noticed in the report that there will be an estimated $100 million debt financing required to be shared between the RPL project and the RRI initiative. Since the report doesn't break it down, I'm going to assume it's a 50-50 split. How can we be working on a $400 million stadium with only $50 million in civic debt financing required? Do we actually have $350 million in realistic commitments from the private sector for this stadium, either with or without the potential provincial funding? I don't mean to sound facetious, but these numbers are just hard for me to crunch as a taxpaying citizen of the city of Regina. Also, as the city has experienced some, major pretty, some pretty major cost overruns on recent projects, the most notable being the city square plaza, not to mention time overruns, what cushion has the city built into, this into the projected financing requirements for this project? Now I'm gonna use a worst case scenario here, saying that the province comes back and says that they have determined that they must tighten their belts. And unfortunately they can't provide any funding at this time. Next, the promises from the private sector don't come to fruition and it turns out that we can only realize 100 million of the $400 million stadium project. What then is the city's plans for the CP lands that have been purchased by that time? And what plans are in place as a plan B in terms of replacement or upgrade to the current Mosaic Stadium? Do we know all of the reasons that were, that the province, uh, didn't word that quite. Do we know what all of the reasons were that the province abandoned the stadium project? I realize it's been publicly stated that since federal funding fell through, that's what ultimately made them decide it was time to pull the plug. But what, el what else has changed since then that now makes this project something worth going after from the city's perspective? What are we going to be doing different to make sure that we don't have those same issues this time around? Now, some people have asked me how I could possibly be so dead set against one project, namely the Moose Jaw Multiplex, and to be so gung-ho about another project, namely the new stadium for Regina. I'll tell you that one of my major issues with the Moose Jaw Multiplex process was all of the closed door meetings and lack of details being made public. I'm afraid that this project is starting to take on some of those same traits. Do you feel it would be too much to request that more details are made public going forward in order to, be, in order to provide a transparent planning process? Aside from any confidential information, obviously that would fall under privacy laws. 
I cannot see why these details shouldn't be made available to those that are interested in seeing exactly how this project is coming along and how their tax dollars are being spent. I can say that one of the biggest differences to me between the Moose Jaw Multiplex and the Regina Stadium is that, is that of due diligence. Assuming most of the details from the provincial project are the same as in the RRI, I recall that a lot of planning seemed to have gone into this project at that point of the game. <clears throat> that was another thing that I disliked from the Moose Jaw Multiplex project was that I saw a lack of planning and foresight. That lack of planning resulted in the multiplex being divided into two locations and having extremely limited on-site parking, on parking for the arena. I do feel confident that with the project details that were at, at least at the provincial level, that most of these kind of concerns have already been addressed for our RRI. Now turning to the current stadium in the report, I note that on page six, it states that large revenue generating stadium events are not seen to be compromised based on the lack of a roof. It also states, it also talks about how the number of headline concerts that the city could attract is limited and they are generally planned in the summertime. Now considering the temporary upgrades that are currently in the works for Mosaic Stadium that is anticipated to bring the capacity to 50,000 uh, people, as well as the previous facts, why then is a new domed stadium considered so essential? It would appear that we could very well satisfy our requirements without such massive capital investment. Keep in mind at this point in time, I am still for the RRI as, as has been in the works for the last year. But these seem to be legitimate concerns that I feel taxpayers deserve the answer to. Either building a much more cost-effective open air stadium or simply upgrading what we already have. Something else that I found very interesting to note is that again on page six, it states that most modern open air stadiums have, also have the ability to deliver on four season use in climate like Regina through various temporary and permanent design elements. My question then becomes, why can we simply not do some modifications to the existing, existing stadium or just make a new open air stadium with those kind of adjustments to make it usable year round? And finally, I'm curious to know exactly how the RRI project fits into our Design Regina official community plan. Has this project been considered in the current consultation process? Thank you for your time, and I will now welcome any questions from Council. Thank you very much for your presentation, Mr. Novak. Are there any questions uh, of our delegation? Uh, Council Bryce. Thank you. There's lots of um, reference to the Moose Jaw project. I'm just wondering how you became involved with that. Um, basically, um, I just, I was a concerned taxpayer in Moose Jaw when I was living there. Um, and I just, uh, I felt that there was some issues that needed to be addressed from the taxpayer standpoint. Okay, so you lived in Moose Jaw for that time and yes. became concerned. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Donald. Thank you, Worship. Uh, welcome to Council. Thank you. Uh, just a procedural thing first. You've asked lots of questions here. You understand that in the way it works, um, you can ask the questions and, and so on, and that typically after we find some answers and so on. So Absolutely. Do you understand that? Okay. I'm just going to pick a couple things out of here. So I, I can't comment on Moose Jaw and make no pretend to do that. Uh, but I did want to comment about one thing in terms of uh, parking, made reference to parking, and in terms of Moose Jaw, certainly aware of that. I, I, I'm asking this. Are you aware in terms of a new development in Edmonton, uh, the current situation in BC where they redevelop the stadium, in terms of what's planned for Hamilton, what uh, Quebec City is looking at, the current situation in, in Ottawa with Lansdowne Park and so on, that most of those types of stadiums are not looking at having massive amounts of parking around them, but taking advantage of public transit. Are you aware of that? Uh, I can't say I am aware of that. Okay. I, I, just so that we understand that that's the common concept. Um, and I can go on to some others, but just so you understand that. Um, I, I think that there is reference made within the report to about open air and and uh, and dome stadiums as well. So we'll probably flesh that out a little bit. But I want to make sure that you're also aware of this. Do you understand that the project that was initiated by the province is in fact not here anymore? That project is done. Um, so whatever the four hundred million dollar project does not exist anymore. Are you clear about that? Uh, I guess one clarification I'd like to have is, is this somehow still based on that or is it a completely brand new okay. project? I appreciate the question. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Um, Mr. Norbeck, have you had the opportunity to read report uh, CM12-4, which is the Regina Revitalization Initiative status update? Yes, I have. Yeah. Okay. 
That's good because a lot of the questions that you asked are actually in that report, so I think you'll be quite satisfied once we uh, have that discussion this evening. The next question is, can you tell me where you received the $400 million dome stadium in, in the report CM12-4? <laughs> Um, as I referenced, uh, it, that was the dollar figure that I remember being tossed around when the province had had the project. So I just want to confirm, nowhere in the report that we're just debating tonight is there a discussion about a $400 million dome stadium? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So can you tell me why you would have referenced it in your report? I guess just from an outsider's perspective, without knowing very many details of the project, I'm basing it off of what I can understand of the project from... From that perspective even though it's not in this report that's correct yeah. okay my next uh, question is you made reference to a number of cost overruns can you tell me um, the other cost overruns that you're referring to re referencing to are you speaking towards which projects? Yeah, or? you said also the city has experienced some pretty major cost overruns on recent projects, the most notable being City Square Plaza, which is which is which is one. But you said others. Can you tell me what those other ones are? Um, I just know specifically about the uh, City Square Plaza. I don't know enough about the past projects, but that's so one of my you, biggest are you, concerns. So, are you? Is, there, is it a fact that there are major cost overruns? on other recent projects that you have stated in your report. Is that a fact or is that just your perception? It's my per perception. Okay, so it's not a fact. That would be correct. Okay, just want to double check. Um, and I also, you made reference that we put in an application to the city, but the report doesn't talk about an application. It speaks to a, a, uh, a project that's been submitted. Are you aware of the difference between an application and a project? Um, I recall in the timeline it says April 24th that an application for pr provincial funding had been submitted. Project. I believe the, the term was project that was that was uh, used. But that that's fine. Not a not a uh, okay. just an understanding of uh, of what um, what is on paper and what is factual. And um, tell me about uh, transparency. And um, can, you, can you tell me the closed-door meetings that have taken place in regards to this project that uh, we're discussing this evening? <coughs> Pardon me. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? You made reference to closed-door meetings, uh, that you're afraid that, uh, that this uh, is starting to take on the same traits that Mustra did in respect to closed-door meetings and lack of details. I'm just wondering if you can re make reference to those closed-door meetings, and second of all, uh, the lack of details that you're referring to. Um, specifically speaking towards the Moose Drop project, um, there were no, several... No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, not the Moose Drop project. That's okay. irrelevant in this particular okay. discussion. I'm referring to this project, the, the Regina Revitalization right. project. Um, basically, just my, my feeling that um, a lot of things are not being revealed to the public as they could be. Okay, so in your particular um, submission, you said you understand that in certain areas there's going to be confidentiality that Absolutely. can't be discussed. Absolutely. So above and beyond that, in which I believe report CM124 that we're going to debate this evening, that you based your submission on, I believe it makes statements that there are what you actually agree to, that uh, there are certain negotiations that can't be of, of, of in the public realm. Beyond that, is there anything else that you see that isn't in the public realm here this evening? Well, I guess one of the biggest biggest concerns that I have is the funding application that was submitted to the province. Is what kind of dollar figure are we are we requesting from them? And again, the report I think speaks speaks specifically to that. Um, so I'm, 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 I would suggest that um, have have another look at the, at the report. But I'm glad you came forward and asked those questions because they're all answered in the in the report. Okay. Thank, thank you, you for your uh, thank you very much. Oh, I, one more question. Sorry, Councillor uh, Hinks. You got a question or no? When you talk of overruns, are you, are you familiar with the last major project in Regina, the Cooperator Center with the six arenas under one roof? Uh, I didn't follow that one as, as closely. Well, no, just, a, just a question, Councillor Hanks. You can... did, did you know that it came in under budget and ahead of time? I'm, I'm glad to hear that. That's one of the nice parts well, of some projects. I would really like to hear where you, where you found these overruns and overcost them, because uh, I, I just don't see it. As I've already said, that's my opinion. 
um, based on the major, the one that I know that has been made public was the City Square Plaza as far as any others. I could possibly go into more detail and request uh, uh, access to information and find whatever documents I need to. I really don't feel it's necessary. So you have no real facts, you're just making accusations? There's no accusations. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay. Again, thank you very much for your presentation, Mr. Novak. Thank you.